welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Puerto. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with As you can see, our second candle is lit. We are one step closer on our Advent journey to, to celebrating the birth of Christ. But still, we have a ways to go, uh, reflection to do, preparation and penance, maybe as we prepare to receive this Prince of Peace in our lives, we bring to mind those times when we have not been agents of God's peace. Instead, we have brought division and harm to others. and We ask for forgiveness. Lord God, your Son came to teach us how to love and how to serve. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your Son came to bind up our wounds and to forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. He came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. On that day, there shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The sucking child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as an ensign to the people. Him shall the nations seek, and his dwellings shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
In his days shall justice flourish and great peace forever. In, In his, his days shall justice flourish, flourish and great peace forever. O oh God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. In, in his, his days shall justice flourish and great peace forever. In his days shall justice flourish and great peace till the moon is no more. He shall rule from sea to sea, from the river to the bounds of the earth. In, in his, his days shall justice flourish and great peace forever. For he shall save the needy when they cry, the poor and those who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and the needy and save the lives of the needy. In his days shall justice flourish and great peace forever. May his name endure forever. His name continue like the sun. Every tribe shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. In his, in his days, days shall, shall justice, justice flourish and great peace forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that by steadfastness and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, therefore, as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. For I tell you, that Christ became a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs and in order that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, and he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist. And his food was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit that befits repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able to, from these stones, raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, 
whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the granary. With the chafe he will burn with unquenchable fire. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we wear the purple of Advent, a time of reflection, a time of preparation, a time of purification. We prepare ourselves to receive, to welcome the Prince of Peace by examining our lives and asking ourselves, what obstacles are there in our own lives to fully embracing the new life heralded by Jesus? Since Paul spoke about the weakness of our human nature, of doing what we do not want to do, even when we know it is wrong, he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We can all resonate with those sentiments. We know what it is to be flawed human beings, wanting to do the right thing, but often finding ourselves doing the complete opposite. That was the experience of St. Paul. I suspect it is often our own experience. None of us are perfect. But what matters most in the face of sin and failure is that we keep on trying to live a good life. When we are confronted by sin in our life, when we are confronted by our very own personal sin, there are four common responses that we tend to make. The first response is to ignore it, to pretend that our sin is not sinful. The Pharisees and Sadducees tended to be like that. That's why Jesus called them hypocrites. The second is to minimize it, by saying that it's okay, because everybody else is doing it. Well, that's how corruption takes root in our hearts, in society, in our businesses, in our political parties. Because everyone says it's all right, because everybody else is doing it. The third response is to believe that our sin is so bad, so terrible that we cannot be forgiven. This leads to a despair that turns us inwards, away from the love and the grace of God. Well, Satan wants to win our souls for himself. And he will do it by making us believe that the bad we do is actually good. And if he cannot make us believe that, he will try and convince us that we are beloved beyond the love of God. And so either through pride, or through despair, Satan will try to turn us away from God. And either way, he will have won. The fourth response to sin in our life is repentance. John came baptizing and preaching a message of repentance. It's a word which means turning away from sin and turning towards God. Nelson Mandela famously said, A saint is a sinner who keeps on trying. Now John the Baptist gave quite an aggressive response to the Pharisees and Sadducees when they came to him for his baptism of repentance. He tells them to produce good fruit as a sign of that repentance. He says, produce the evidence that you are truly turning away from your sin and turning towards God. In other words, if you and I have truly repented, truly turned back to God, then that should be visible through the choices that we make, the values, the actions of our life, the fruit of our lives. 
to quote Nelson Mandela again. He said that what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. It's the difference that we've made in the lives of others that will determine the significance of the life that we lead. This then is the true mark of our repentance, the mark of our shared sainthood, that we learn from our mistakes, that we don't give up, not on God and not on ourselves, and that we will leave the world a better place because we have lived and walked this dusty red earth of Africa. Now, in the words of the Apostles' Creed, we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord Jesus is always near to us, always coming into our hearts. As we await the revelation of Christ's glory at the end of the ages, we ask the Father to hear and answer the prayers that we make in the name of the beloved Son. That the Lord will give wisdom to those who shepherd and teach the church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will give comfort to those who live in the agony of warfare and violence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will give healing to those who are weakened by sickness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the Lord will give perseverance to those who are persecuted for their witness to the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will give salvation to those who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis that volunteer non-profit organizations committed to human development may find people dedicated to the common good and ceaselessly seek out new paths to international cooperation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, ruler of all times and seasons, we ask you to fill these days of waiting with your saving love. Help us to grow in our love for you and for each other and to be at peace in your sight. Bring us to glory with Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. 
Let the men of this water and wine that we come to share in the divinity of Christ and with himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that will become for us our spiritual drink. This is the God's prayer. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of our name, for our holy and beautiful Lord's holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue the protection of your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never stop gathering a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we've brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more, giving thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, to be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you and thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with your apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant prayers and your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Butit Lakale, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good, for it is through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirits. To share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take the grace of the Lord. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, 
you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm the things of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.